What's something creepy that has happened to you that you still occasionally think about to this day? Part 2. Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing our channel. Account 1. When I was in elementary school, me brother and friends would ride bikes around our apartment complex, and one time a guy in a station wagon drove up and tried to offer us Halloween candy he had left over. He was kind of weird and kept trying to get us to get closer to pick out what candy we wanted. We felt kind of weirded out by him, but it was, but thought it was just goofy, so we all jokingly ran away, yelling, Stranger danger like we had seen in videos at school. A couple months later, the same guy pulled up to us asking for directions. We told him we barely know our way around because we are just kids. But he tried so hard to get us to come closer and point on the map where we were. We all did the same thing and ran away jokingly yelling for help. It wasn't until the third time he tried to lure us into his car months later, offering a ride home that we got a little freaked out. He got out of the station wagon this time and said he wanted to put our bikes in his car. We all freaked out and started actually yelling in fear for help and sped towards my friend's door. His mom leaned out the kitchen window to see what happened, and the guy leapt back into his car and burned rubber. Now I'm thinking I need to look up missing children in my hometown during the 90s. Account 2. I used to spend a lot of time walking through the woods, fields by my mom's house, and noticed a path one day that I hadn't seen before. I was listening to music following down this path as the trees around became more dense. You could tell it wasn't often people walk down there anymore. I remember it being more of mud, gravel trail, at this point, I was deep in the woods, hadn't seen another person for a long time, and shaded by the leaves of the trees. I don't know what made me notice at first, but I think I smelt the smoke. I stopped on the path, and maybe five meters away to my left in the trees was a small fire that had obviously been stamped out in a hurry. Still burning embers and smoke so it had been done only a few moments before, Cue me realizing there wasn't anyone around that I'd seen, and that whoever had stamped out the fire was hiding in the trees somewhere. I have never felt a gut feeling to run like I did in that moment. Straight back the way I came, and did not look behind me until I was back into the main woodland with people around. We'll never know if I was paranoid and it was nothing, or if I avoided something bad that day, haha. -ha. Account 3. I had a stalker in college had to move dorm rooms and building four times in the middle of the night, friends would help me get to my dorm by pretending we were going to theirs and making sure no one was around when I'd go into mine. He found two of the dorms and left notes in my room. It's been over 11 years and I live in a completely different state, but every once in a while I get the feeling I'm being watched and panic. Account 4 I briefly had a stalker in college as well. I met him on Tinder and went on one really bad date where he told me he had in fact lied about his name and age, and I got freaked out and ended the date. A couple days later, I left my apartment where he picked me up because of some unrelated roommate problems and was living in my car before the university gave me a dorm room. Then a couple days after that, I get a call from one of the aforementioned roommates saying a guy dropped something off for me at 8 a.m., this dude lived in central New Jersey, and I went to college in NYC. He made the trip out to give me a well-used hard copy of an album I had mentioned liking, apparently his favorite album from his personal collection, A Drawing of Us. He gave me disproportionate anime titties. It looked like a 13-year-old boy's idea of a sexy woman, and wrote a long letter, the gist of which was, If I can't have you, no one can. Thankfully, I wasn't in that apartment anymore. But after class that day, I saw him waiting outside my car in the university parking lot, the car where I lived. I noped out of there really quickly and told the school, which is why they gave me the room to begin with. He kept texting me and I kept blocking him. He must have made 15 new social media accounts before he got the idea. I'm still scared of ever going to Central Jersey because I'm scared I'll run into him and he'll follow me home. Account 5 my dad never went on vacations with us, workaholic. So every year it was my mom, my two sisters, and I. One year we rented a little cabin at Lake of the Ozarks. A storm rolled in one night, and in the flashes of lightning, you could just make out an old lady standing out in the storm watching our little cabin. My mom got more and more freaked out as time passed, and the lady just stood there, hair blowing in the wind, staring at us. 
Mom finally got the nerve to call out to her. Go away. You don't belong here. But she wouldn't budge. Next morning, the sun comes up and she's still standing there, only it turns out it's a mop draped over a clothesline. Account 6. When I was maybe 10, I was over at a friend's house hanging out. Her neighbor was out of town and my friend was feeding the cat while they were gone. So my friend and I went over to feed the cat. Immediately upon opening the door, we heard someone walking upstairs. They were loud, heavy, slow footsteps, like didn't even sound human. My friend and I just looked at each other and sprinted back to her house. The worst part was we told her mom and the mom didn't believe us and made us go back and finish feeding the cat alone. We were terrified but did it. When the neighbor came back, they found that their house had been broken into ETA. Thank you for the awards. I've never gotten any before. As for my friend's mom's reaction, we were in upper end suburbs in the early 2000s. At the time, I think people thought these were incredibly safe with no crime not the magnets for robbery they often were. It also probably totally sounded like we thought it was a monster, ghost. At that age, we didn't really understand what it was, but definitely in the future when my kids are scared, even if it's a monster, I will know better to listen to them. Account 7. I was at an internal work event, party at a fancy hotel in a different state. It was 80s themed. I started talking to some dude. I barely knew anyone there, so I was trying to network. And he tells me he doesn't work for my company. Okay, no worries. I make a joke about free food. He stares me straight in the eye and picks up one of my French fries off my plate. Dips it in ketchup and eats it without saying a word. I kind of freaked out and dropped the food in the trash and just walked out of the room and decide not to think about it. A few minutes later, there he is, staring at me. I change rooms again. I'm short, so I hid behind people and pretended to talk to people I kind of recognized from my home office. He follows me. Every few minutes I see him. I finally got the courage to approach a woman I knew the name of from some meetings and seeing her around the office. When I asked if the party had any kind of security, she immediately asked if it was about the dude in the blue jacket and white hat. Apparently, she'd noticed him staring at me creepily, so I didn't have to try and convince anyone. Security took him away and everyone moved on, but I was scared and paranoid for the rest of the business trip edit. Thank you, everyone who has sent kind words and awards. I was just telling my story for my own sake, but I'm glad so many people have seen it, and I feel for everyone who has had similar experiences. To all the people who keep sending me creepy messages, WTF is wrong with you that you read this and that's your response. Seriously, stop. Account 8. My mom used to start at work at like 3 a.m. And she was up at about 2, 2.30 having her coffee. I heard her up and went to see her. She joked that she heard something outside and me being a bit silly opened the blinds up wide as a joke. And there was a guy just standing there staring into the lounge room. That was creepy enough as it is. But what sticks with me is the fact he didn't run or really react for what felt an eternity. While I ran to get my old man and brother, apparently he just stood there and then slowly walked off. Account 9. I was followed home once. I was 23 at the time. I'm female, and I lived a five-minute walk to a busy bar area. I noticed him following me, and I went to a full-out run to get into my building. The guy also ran. But luckily, by the time he got to the entrance to my building, the glass sliding door had shut. Automatic buzz door. The absolutely terrifying part was that as I stood there behind the glass catching my breath, he just stood there staring at me. Didn't walk away or anything. What in the hell was he planning to do if he caught me? Still gives me the shakes five years later. Account 10. When I was in middle school, my girlfriends and I rode the bus home most days. The bus driver was this older guy who was super nice, fun, and would allow us to play whatever radio station we wanted, and he would drop us girls off at home last so we could dance around on the bus. I remember he would let us stand at the front of the bus while he drove, and he would purposely swerve to make us fall on top of him. I remember thinking it was weird, but it wasn't until I got older that I realized how wrong that all was. I decided to Google his name. I'm now in my 30s. 
and found that he is a convicted sex offender and is currently incarcerated. Scary part is when I think back. He obviously knew where I lived, and I remember there were several times when he'd drive past my house on the days I wouldn't ride with him. Keep in mind, driving past my house was out of the way of his normal route, so it was intentional. Account 11. When I was 16, I went to Tampa with a friend. We were staying in a shitty hotel with a pool. That evening, we decided to go take a dip. Everything was fine, it was just us at the pool and a table of adults with a little boy. We were on the opposite side of the pool when the little boy ran over to us and started chatting. It was pretty evident that the kid was lonely and the adults weren't paying any attention to him. Now, this kid was young, probably around seven years old. I talked to him because he wanted to talk to me, and I didn't think anything of it. He asked us if we were going to the theme park there. We were and asked how long we'd been in town. Then out of nowhere, he asks us if we like vodka. It kind of hit me as weird because I'm not sure I even knew what vodka was at age seven. I said, no, we don't drink. He then told us that his parents let him have a few sips of their drinks, and they would let us drink if we went back to their room. This is when I got really creeped out. Me and my friend got the hell out of there and ran back to our rooms. I'm not sure if the kid was just weird, but I kind of felt like the people at the table, kids' parents, were trying to lure us to their room using their child. Very scary. Account 12. Someone broke into my house while I was home alone when I was 19. I found them hiding behind this seven-foot-tall toolbox my dad had in the basement. I was about five feet away and saw their hands. I told them I was going to let them leave out the back door, but I was calling the cops. I locked the basement door and ran upstairs. Watched them run down the street with their shirt pulled up over their head. About a month later, we got back from a trip out of town and we had been robbed. I can't imagine it wasn't the same person. Account 13. When I was little, I was sleeping over at my friend's house. I woke up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. Dark, far end of the hallway, away from her room. When I stepped out of the bathroom, her older brother was standing outside the door, in the dark. He never said a word, just walked up to me silently and put his hands around my neck. Someone stirred and he dropped his hands. I immediately called my mom and left without even saying anything. Friend never believed me and I never went back. Account 14. I was 18 when I had my first long-term girlfriend. We ended dating on, off for four years. When we first started fooling around, she kind of clammed up and I backed off. On the car ride home, she explained that her last BF was very forceful and that it would take her a while to open up. I, of course, was understanding, and offered comfort and was willing to wait. Things seemed fine for a while, but whenever we'd have trouble, he'd kind of creep back into the picture. Usually through, I'm older now, AOL Messenger, he'd talk to her and then message me threatening me and telling me he was going to get her back. This went on our entire relationship. One time, she called me hysterically, because he'd shown up at her house and grabbed her, kissed her, he was always a huge strain on our relationship, until about the four-year mark, when she called me up really upset and asked if I would come over. She said she had made a big mistake. I was pretty sure she cheated on me and I dreaded it was with this guy. When I get to her house, she explains that this old boyfriend was her the entire time. I was catfishes by my girlfriend for four fucking years. Constantly harassed and threatened in my weakest moments nonetheless. It's been 20 years since then, and it still messes me up when I think back. Account 15. Three friends sleeping over at his house. Two of us were in one room and he was in his own. We both woke up to the door conjoining the rooms, creaking open, and we saw him pointing a bow and an arrow at us. Didn't say anything, he just left after a few seconds. We just went back to sleep for some reason, but he denied it in the morning when we confronted him. No more sleepovers with him after.